And welcome back to our special New Year's edition of Flashpoint. Senator Tom Tillis thought to be one of the more vulnerable senators up for re-election this year. His primary contender dropped out late last year, but he's going to have to have a strong Democrat to face uh, no matter who wins the primary. Lately, Tillis stood behind Trump no, no matter what. In the past, he'd been troubled by at least some of the president's behavior and thoughts. Many wondering what Tillis we will see as he gears up for a tough fight ahead. Which Tillis will we see? I think we will see the Tillis that is a party loyalist, that is a Trump loyalist. Uh, that will play well to the base. And I think as we, we talked earlier, this idea of partisanship is a true drug nowadays. Mm -hmm. And it is something that people will only blindly follow. And it will also be, as Scott pointed out, the, the negative. You know, I'm not gonna vote for a Democrat, you know, and I'll vote for the president and, and his loyal troops. You, mentioned, you mentioned earlier the Washington Post op-ed piece that he took out last year. Yeah. Uh, and within a matter of weeks, he, he reined in and was told he had changed his mind. I think, um, I mean, where was the person that second-guessed everything that comes out of an office? He talked, he really just didn't write it. He said there was no um, intellectual honesty to say that the president had this, what he called, overreach. And I think that really hurt him immediately, but I think the memories are short. And I think the RNC coming, and I think uh, looking at who his contender might be, because it's money, name recognition, organization. And no matter what anybody says, I don't think Cal Hunting Cunningham has yeah. that name recognition. Should he be um, the nominee? And I think that um, Tillis is going to play to his base. He's really pretty Teflon, at least has been in the past. Till he has that triumvirate. Right, those, those three key things. And what he can do is play directly to the base. Um, he can say, you know, I am a faithful Republican. He's going to be able to stand up at the, the, the convention and play the ultimate party guy uh, next to Trump, which will empower his base. But then he can play any role he wants before November. He will have, without a doubt, the Republicans in his corner to vote for him. And then he can also say to waver those, uh, the, the folks in the middle, you know, I don't always agree with Trump. And he can play yeah. that card as much as he wants. And he'll bring in the negative partisanship. He can convince the moderates. He is definitely out in front. It's, it's, it's his race to lose at this point. You mentioned the RNC. It is coming here to Charlotte. It's going to be here August 24th to 27th. There'll be about 50 to 60,000 people here spending $200 million. It was a contentious vote by city council to bring the convention here. You probably remember. For the convention, the floor of the Spectrum Center will be raised about 10 feet to put the stage up higher. Charlotte will be only a handful of one of the cities to host both conventions. This will be uh, typically slightly smaller than what the DNC was back a few years ago. All right, how do we think it's going to go? Some city leaders worried about the, the protesters or things that said there on the dais uh, that could be inflammatory. What do you think? Good, good for all of it. <laughs> you know, protesters have to buy food too. It, you know, they have to stay somewhere. This is great for us for a region. Nobody is going to, to look at it and see, you know, protesters as long as it's not Chicago 1968. Yeah. Yeah. As long as that's not the case, no one's gonna blame Charlotte for any of this. We are a, you know, everything is national now. So few things are regional. Um, you know, any protesters are not gonna be seen as, oh my gosh, those people from up, upstate South Carolina yeah. and, and, and North Carolina are a bunch of crazy. No, no, no. The crazies come from the nation now. It's, it's great for the economy. It is awesome that we had both parties and I, I know we are doing a class directly on this, yeah. just like we did a class directly when the DNC was here. Um, we're doing a class on conventions. We're bringing students up. Yeah. It is a wonderful thing. Oh, you know, and if it if it upsets your partisan beliefs, I'm sorry. The yeah. last one maybe made you happy. This one, I don't care. It's great for students. So it really is. And I think when you say 1968. A lot of people don't remember that, but they can remember this convention and uh, the last. I think students are going to get a lot out of it. I will say, and I really will predict this, North Carolina is no longer purple. It will be red. Mm. And I think the convention will have a lot to do with that because there's so much free airtime. You don't have to pay for this media. Well, it's a bold prediction there. 
Yeah, I think, you know, for Charlotte, what this does is that it continues to increase the visibility, not just nationally, but internationally. I mean, all the eyes of the world is going to be on the renomination of Donald Trump, who is very controversial and generates the kind of media attention, and that's going to have the spillover effect onto Charlotte, you know, whether it's positive or negative, as long as it's media coverage, and we'll see if Charlotte gets the tag on NC as we tend to, to dismiss yeah, from what are you, time what are you to talking time. About? In, in, in Rock Hill, SC, we have to remind people it doesn't stand for South Charlotte. <laughs> oh, <goodness. laughs> right. More flash one after this.